Hello, IKEA doesn't do too many product releases, which is great. I can keep up. Ha. Ah. Today is their very much requested 65 watt USB C power adapter, the highest power offering yet. Did they do anything new with this adapter, or is it just another standard adapter wrapped in a plastic shell? The main thing with this product is the more budget pricing. Of course, it's more expensive being more watts, but it'll be rather difficult to do the physical comparisons since I shredded the old ones to bits. Another good thing is the sharing is not too much of a concern because this only has one port. So come along while I explore another USB power adapter. Some specifications, they may not be too important for you. Others may be critical. Just skip around to find what you're interested in. The efficiency, isolation, temperatures, and of course, modes of operation are going to get checked. Finally, these will be compared to a bunch of other USB chargers. The Apple similar power range adapters, of course, come to mind and Anchor's offerings. The adapter, just on first appearance, seems like it is a bit on the larger side for the power level, so maybe it is hiding some secrets. It's going to get technical, so ask questions if you have them. There is an affiliate link, which earns me a couple percent, but costs you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. So first off, here is the adapter. It shares the same design as the other IKEA adapters in the series. This one, of course, having more power available. The adapter is actually fairly fully featured. It does have some limitations, which we will talk about. Some initial concerns are the non-folding plugs and the fact that everything is in a line, so the adapter will stick out rather far from a regular plug. This could be a problem anywhere, but particularly in certain design outlets. This adapter has a safety listing, of course. This mark is usually an indication that the device will fail more safely and generally won't cause harm to the user. This device has that, and it also has the six in a circle, which indicates a certain level of efficiency and idle power usage, which will certainly be getting tested and verified. Once plugging this charger in, it does show some very low idle power consumption. Good start. The idle power consumption stays low when plugging in a light load USB tester. So this means even if you leave a wireless charger plugged in, it shouldn't be burning away doing nothing. Modern adapters are generally very good here, but there are always surprises in the budget end of the market. This charger offers quite a few different modes of operation. They only captured some of the modes on the user manual and on the device itself. The user manual isn't bad. It does state a maximum operating temperature, which is pretty hot. Realistically, you don't want to charge your device when it's that hot anyway, so the charger going slower is a good thing. The thermals on this charger will be coming up later. The basic modes it has are impressive. Quite a comprehensive range. It has programmable power supply, or PPS, which allows the device to adjust the voltage to match the needs of whatever device is connected. But it does not go up to 21 volts. It stops at 16 volts and only does 3 amps. So check if your device can charge at the speed and if it's compatible. One thing this does have, and is welcome, is a fixed 12 volt mode, which is quite useful for alternate uses, like little adapters that use a USB-C to barrel plug for various electronics. The standard USB PD modes look good. The 20 volt is the only way to get the full power out of this device. So essentially, laptops. This charger doesn't have any of the newest modes of operation available, and that is expected in a budget offering. Something has to give, so maybe a last generation protocol chip, which means a reliable chipset in here. Interesting is to see the QC23 modes available, so this charger should work with quite a few other devices. So this must be able to work with the CC line not being activated, right? So this device, which doesn't have the CC resistor or logic, could potentially charge without the CC pin. It doesn't work. How about a direct QC asking device? This one, also doesn't work. So it looks like you need to engage the CC line to get power out of this. So it's kind of a hybrid device. It looks like even with this engaged, this locks down the device to 5 volt only. So it really isn't going to do work with those QC devices. Technically, the USB protocol chip should pull the D plus and D minus lines, but they'll read zero with no 5 volts. But if you add a resistor to get the 5 volts on, then it locks in the PD mode. So it's a trap. The Power Z kind of fails here displaying modes that may technically exist, but aren't really accessible. The maker of the power adapter should not present these as possible modes either. The basic specifications are on screen. The efficiency is very good. 
The idle is excellent, whether on 120 volts or 230 volts AC. It's going to do that job being asked of it. The efficiency did decrease slightly on 230 volts, which has been seen before. With a low power quality, poor power factor, and a non-linear current wave, this happens. One thing you see here is the overload level is a bit on the high side, 80 watts before it shut down. I think it's a bit overbuilt for the capacity, which means it may last longer. As mentioned, this is another IKEA charger, which tend to be on the budget side. This one is not too much different, offering a good price on a well-characterized and safe adapter. The detailed data for this adapter shows it meets the efficiency and idle power requirements no problem. On 120 volts, you can see the top efficiency around 92%. This is very good. The voltage and output ripple stayed within acceptable ranges. One of the better ripple performance adapters out there. This thing has a lot of output capacitance. It stays on after you unplug it for about a minute with five volt negotiated. Flipping over to 230 volts AC and the peak efficiency stays the same at 92%. But it moves around a bit where this happens. In this case, near maximum load. The only real difference in these adapters is if they have or don't have the next thing. These adapters lack power factor correction, which is expected at this power level. They don't even try to hide it. The AC waveforms would ideally all look sinusoidal, the yellow line. The reality is pretty far from that. The peak current is not the worst I've seen, but this is going to change device to device more than a power factor corrected device. The capacitors control this and they are 20% tolerance or more devices. The result of no PFC means the real efficiency of these devices is a little lower than presented. In the thermal testing, this device is good. I think it stayed very reasonable temperature wise, no hot potato and it doesn't show any signs of slowing down or turning off. The high efficiency and the large surface area with the case did a good job of getting the heat out of the adapter. Lab area is fairly cool as usual, so this is certainly not a thermally stressful situation like charging in the sun or something. But in comparison with other devices that can't go the distance, this is a good result. The lower temperature hopefully means this adapter or charger will last a little longer, even being in the budget end of the market. In terms of isolation, which is the thing separating the dangerous side, the mains, from you on the low voltage side, this does good. The adapter is not the best in class for leakage from the AC side to the DC side, like the Apple adapters, but it is by no means bad. The leakage is important when using this with things like metal bodied devices for the user feel of the device when it's plugged into a charger while you're using it. This is the tingling sensation you get sometimes. There really wasn't anything that stood out from the vast majority of chargers on the market. So overall, good. Okay, time to compare this charger. I have so many chargers, so I'm going to choose a range of chargers to compare these. Basically, choosing some of the better options I've tested. I want to pick a good range of chargers from 40 watts to 100 watts. Some have more than one port, some are just one port. On first glance, you can see this charger is not that small. Physically, the Anker 100 watt adapter is a little larger. Yeah, definitely didn't put this in the chart. Good job, video editor. The 67 watt Google version is though. I would visually compare this to the Google 67 watt adapter, but it's currently not working for some reason. In terms of weight and size, this is a 60 watt class charger and it's not as small and it's not as light as some of the other options out there. It's not bad by any means, but it's not going to be claiming any awards with the lightest and smallest community. The Amazon Basics and the Apple 4060 do better here. The Amazon Basics is edged out when it comes to performance and price though. The Google 67 watt is the closest size and weight wise, and you do get two ports with that one, but that one is expensive. I'd put it closest to the Apple 70 watt adapter, which is small, but that does have an interchangeable outlet head. In terms of value, I picked the same adapters. What a surprise, I know. These are a range of performance adapters. The Amazon was the previous 65 watt budget option that basically met the criteria a USB adapter needs to meet. I think this IKEA adapter crushes that one. It's a better value, it's a better adapter, being that it's more efficient and it's got more modes of operation, so more compatible. The Google adapter is expensive when compared to its competition. Keep in mind that there are tons of value options out there that aren't really a value. They're hot garbage. I've looked at plenty of them over the years. The Amazon Basics is losing its spot today though. This new IKEA will go full speed for Apple devices, but also work with things that need 12 volts. 
When looking at the idle graph for this, this charger is right in the mix with all of these good performers. It's another negligibly good charger. The light load efficiency is also very good with this charger. The only real standout here is the Bassius 100 Watt GAN 3 desktop charger, and that is a lot older at this point, but still good. They've really made these chargers essentially turn off when not being used. If you are only plugging in a USB-C to C cable, this idle power is valid since the cable can't turn on the USB port. Good stuff all around, really. The average power consumption graph is covering a lot of different devices. Some are starting to appear like they are worse. The Amazon Basics is taking the lowest spot, and today I think it is going to be ousted by the IKEA adapter as the better budget option. The new IKEA charger doesn't quite beat Apple's 70 watt charger or the new Google 67 watt charger, but it's splitting hairs close. The Apple adapter is a bit better, but it's a lot more expensive. The Apple 96 watt charger, which is getting old, is also surprisingly good. Compared with a lot of the worst chargers I've looked at, they are all above 90% efficiency, and that is really a good showing. Conclusion time. So this is IKEA's new charger. It doesn't happen often, but I think I need to declare a new category winner. This is the best single port budget charger I've tested. Are there cheaper chargers on the market? Oh yeah. And there's some bad stuff out there. A lot of it. A lot of overheating chargers, a lot of chargers that don't bother with safety listings, a lot of chargers that are just too cheap. This one, although you sacrifice a bit of size and portability and some form factor, you get a good charger at a cheap price. It can be made for less because it's optimized to be simple. Another advantage is the added modes of operation. This charger is what fully pushes out the Amazon Basics charger as the best budget option also the higher price. Adding a 12 volt mode and a PPS or programmable power supply mode, even if not fully featured, opens up the capability of this charger for compatibility with more devices in the market. And that's always welcome. I will probably throw this one in the bag of chargers as a go-to option for a quick charge once in a while. So which one? If you really need an upgrade, this inexpensive option is certainly one to look at. It's going to power a lot of devices and you won't have to worry too much about it getting hot. But if you have one that works fine, you don't need to go get anything new. That one will work fine. So when you're ready or you lose your charger, this is a good option. I wonder if IKEA will branch out to the 100 watt USB category and if they will go multi-port with that. Let me know if the cost is good enough to make the relatively minor disadvantage of this charger worth it. I think they could have knocked it out of the park with this adapter at this size and weight, but it's close enough to be the budget pick. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.